year's election. All right, you have the glossary of terms available to you. Please note that any bulleted name, list, sentence is something that will occur in the lecture. So if you wanted to memorize something, we're only covering those definitions that have bullets. You're not responsible for the others. You should now be over on the part that's called concert. The concert with the introduction having taken place, the introductory comments having taken place, and you are at the point where it says students perform rhythmic patterns, the incredible quarter note. I hope everyone is able to find that. I hope you can. Okay. Um, a note, the incredible quarter note, as I call it. It is a single note occurring in a single position in a measure. Now, it doesn't have to be a quarter note. It could be any note, and that's important. But that note has two qualities. One is it has a position, and the other is that it has a duration. And the combination of those two, the position of the note, where it occurs in the measure, on which count of the measure, and the duration of the note, how long the note is, how much of the measure that note takes up, are two of the primary qualities that every note contains. So, if you play a quarter note on one, it's a one count note played on one. If you play a quarter note on two, it is a one count note occurring on two. We have the position and the duration. It's not so simple, but you understand that if you make a mistake playing rhythmic patterns, however complex the rhythmic patterns might be, you're going to make a mistake either by playing a note at the wrong time or playing a note the wrong length. It's not any more complicated than that. However complicated the music might become, you're either going to play the note at the wrong time or you're going to play the note at the wrong length. And it's interesting that we can even take an example of that from some of the most uh, straightforward listed notes that you see here that I call the incredible quarter note. Watch something as I start to demonstrate it, and I'd like for you to join me here. You see some quarter notes listed below. Now watch and listen. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Two, one, 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 two. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right? Pretty straightforward. How many pulses does it take to establish a pulse? Two. Okay? So all I have to do is give you one, two. And then you're counting out loud, clapping, and performing these rhythmic patterns, all of which are still needing definition. But if you'll do that, like to have that results come back to me, please. So, can I get your materials down? Get your hands free. Get ready to make the clapping. And I'm going to go one, two. And at that very moment, you would go one, two, one, two. While you're doing that, I'll watch the music. But I'm missing a spray. And I'm sorry, but that's what I kept looking for. But I've got a little thing I can substitute here. Something that'll be okay. But there's a spray sitting back in the room back there. I keep my throat going. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? One two. One two, 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 one I'm going to go one two 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 one two. I'm going to go a little bit faster, about twice as fast. Okay. So now watch and listen to these simple, straightforward quarter notes. Let's see what happens to them. Watch and listen. One two 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 I'm going to give you one two, and then you come in one two one two one two one two one two, and let's see how cohesive how cohesive the sound is. We don't want a lot of little people clapping. We want one great big person clapping. You ready? Take a couple starts. We get a false start. Hopefully not. And you don't get much time. You only get my warning. One two, and then you're playing. You ready? By the way, 
I didn't say it so you wouldn't know how to do it. But when you're counting, you're clapping, you're chanting, you're doing anything rhythmically, you've got to do it with more emphasis, more accent, more individualization, more force on the count. You can't be relaxed, relax about it. It's not one, two, one, two, one, two, one. I didn't do that really well, trying to preserve my voice. It has to be more like one, two, 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 one, two. Got to be aggressive about it. Okay, so please do that. You're not having to talk as much as that. Here you go. Good luck.
That was the idea when I drew that distinction. All right, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Now, there are a couple of things that have to take place in order for rhythm to uh, occur. There are many things, but these are the two that I've chosen and have uh, settled on. One is sound. If I got my hands like this, the sound that goes away from my hand is going away at approximately 768 miles an hour or 1,127 feet per second given a constant room temperature of approximately 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Three things generally happen to that sound when it's going away. It's reflected, it's diffused, or it's absorbed. Now that gets into acoustics, which is the science of sound. Each of the things that happen weaken the vibration of the sound wave's intensity. Uh, interesting that the attributes of sound or the science of sound come up with some of the same attributes that you also find when you're talking about the attributes of rhythm or music. Duration, sound has duration. Position or location, sound has that. Rate of vibration or occurrence of silence. What good is sound without silence? Because that's what brings about the essence of it, emphasizes it. The pace, the rate of vibration occurrence of silence, dynamics. That wasn't mentioned before, but that's the louds and the soft. So we really have the same attributes occurring if I'm talking about sound that I do if I'm talking about rhythm itself. I think that's why ultimately music and rhythm all become sound. All of this becomes sound ultimately. That's that's one of the basis. Time is the other. Time is so interesting. You can make a lifetime study of time. I certainly make an eternal lifetime study of time in my own life, either you know, uh, voluntarily or involuntarily. Webster defines time as every moment there ever has been or ever will be. It's one of those infinite wonders that taxes the imagination by a space that knows no limits. Time is endless in either direction and relentlessly moves in one direction. Time is precious. There are 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds in a year of time. We as musicians are dealing with those seconds. We are dividing and subdividing those seconds. In 1967, which is the year I started my professional career, the world's timekeepers met in France and agreed to establish the basic unit of time as the second, the musician's second. The second is equal to 9,192,631,770 vibrations of the cesium-133 atom. And uh, Khalil Gibrar said of that, the timelessness in each of us is aware of life's timelessness and knows that yesterday is but today's memory and tomorrow is but today's dream. As musicians, when we produce rhythmic patterns, we divide, which is one level down, and we subdivide the seconds in order to be able to produce our rhythmic patterns. Now, isn't it interesting that in an orchestra, for instance, the symphony for 30 some odd years, Bill Wilder, second percussionist, and I were both writing rhythm books at the same time, and we realized we'd come to the same conclusion. How many hundreds of times it occurred that the conductor would say, uh, we're in 4-4 four, four time, and say, all right, I'm going to subdivide this. Then he'd go, one and two, he's not subdividing. He's dividing it. He'd be counting in 16th notes if you were going to subdivide it. So we'd look over and have a little snark each other person look at, of course. But, you know, details, details, details. So, what if you had two runners coming in as opposed to two musicians playing a note? And the announcer says, the runners, they're just a second apart. Oh, that was really close. But if you had two musicians coming in on an entrance, one musician was exactly on time, and the other musician was only one second late. He's fired. That was enough. Because it doesn't happen that way in music. You're dividing the second into parts of a second. That's how accurate it has to be. So objective time, then, is clock time. That's clock time. Based on the Earth's rotation on its axis moving at 1,040 miles an hour and around the sun at 67,062 miles per hour. Subjective time is our interpretation of how time seems to be passing, not literally clock time passing. For instance, if I'm speaking to a very enticing person, time seems to be passing more quickly. Whereas if I were 
lean back against a hot stove, however fast I might get off of that hot stove, time seems to be passing very slowly. So there is objective time and subjective time. What is rhythm in relation to objective time? Rhythm, when it's written down, becomes math-based. It becomes objective time. What is rhythm when it is subjective time? That is time that's conceived in the mind of the composer and perceived in the mind of the performer. So we developed this most interesting cycle. It took me a long time to realize that it exists. The 